This Japanese film almost never saw the light of day. The House of the Rising Sun tells the story of a family torn apart by a nuclear disaster, a subject so sensitive in Japan that the director found it impossible to finance his project through conventional means. But the groundswell of anti-nuclear feeling following the Fukushima disaster persuaded Takafumi Ota to turn to the public. He raised $100,000 through crowdsourcing, and the film's now being screened in independent cinemas. The media talks less and less about the problem of nuclear refugees. I asked myself what I could do as a director. I decided to make a film to voice the message that newspapers and television don't. Three years after the Fukushima disaster and the anti-nuclear demonstrations are waning. The Japanese media barely give them any airtime, even if surveys show most people are still against the industry. Japanese people have a tendency to be quite passive, and it's such a tough fight that many have given up, but we have to keep going. The pro-nuclear lobby is an impressive foe, whose reach spans many sectors. Japanese companies sit at the nexus of the global nuclear industry. Toshiba, Hitachi, Mitsubishi, they are part of what Japan calls the nuclear village. Pro-nuclear advocates in industry, finance, in politics, in academia, in the mass media, bureaucracy, these people control the commanding heights of national energy policy. And they are not prepared to let the public decide something that important. Despite the lobby's power, the government still hasn't restarted the country's 50 nuclear reactors taken offline for safety checks. Japan is one of the only countries in the world to have completely shut down its nuclear energy industry. But many expect it will rise up again before too long. What we found was that one of the biggest cities in the disaster zone uh, outside of Fukushima had become a hiring hub for homeless men that are being uh, paid below minimum wage to go and work in decontamination, uh, clean up basically nuclear uh, waste sites in Fukushima affected by the meltdowns uh, two years, three years ago. And, and who's in charge? Who's hiring? In theory, the... Uh, the government is in charge. Uh, they're using taxpayer money, and the government awards massive contracts, uh, billion-dollar contracts, to uh, Japan's biggest construction companies. Uh, the 733 firms involved in, you know, the 10 most contaminated areas. The government is supposed to uh, be in charge of oversight. The Ministry of Environment, who, uh, which has very little experience with public works projects of this scale. Uh, but in reality, on the ground, uh, you know, our interviews with workers and actual contractors and illegal brokers that are hiring the homeless, they all say that there is very little oversight on the ground. Why are homeless men being hired? Uh, labor shortage is a serious issue in Japan. As you know, we have the Olympics. Uh, there's a lot of uh, construction in Tokyo and other major cities. A lot of people, you know, working in Fukushima is not desirable. If you could work in Osaka or Tokyo and constructing, you know, big mansions, you don't want to go and uh, clean up nuclear fallout in Fukushima. 
And I think that's why it is uh, attracting these illegal brokers that are hiring homeless men who have little choice to do anything else. And when it, you talk about a cleanup, I imagine it's decontamination, but I would have expected a certain skill set to be able to carry that out. Sure, I mean, it's an unprecedented project, uh, but it really does not, on the ground, it does not require a lot of skill. What mm -hmm. they're trying to do, what they're doing is very, you know, menial tasks like uh, cutting grass on the ground, scrubbing down houses, hosing down driveways, anything that could bring the radiation levels down. So it, the work actually is menial, uh, but uh, the problem is is that uh, the radiation levels are still high in many of these townships, and they're exposing homeless men with very little, you know, knowledge about radiation dangers, and sending them into these work sites. So what has the government response been to this report then? The government response is that they advise the contractors to oversee the process and to make sure that the contractors are, you know, taking care of the workers. And there has been no specific comment so far. I mean, homeless, homeless men in Japan were responsible for building some of the nuclear plants in this country uh, and maintaining them. But now, you know, the radiation levels are much higher and Japan, the government, uh, is not doing anything Do so far to protect them. So you've given us uh, what the government has said or perhaps not said, really. What about the Japanese people? Do they care? I think they do. I mean, there's uh, been a string of bad news inside the plant and outside. A lot of residents are waiting on this cleanup work to finish so that they can, you know, return to their homes or decide what the future is going to look like. A lot of people are in limbo. So, of course, uh, but do know, they the care? I mean, the is... about these men that are being exploited, from what you tell me. I do think they care. I think a lot of people are surprised by this happening, but they also find it inevitable. There's a level of a uh, uh, apathy in the Japanese public, I think, towards news about Fukushima because it just keeps getting worse. Japanese government officials say they plan to revise their policy for disposing of nuclear waste. They want to play a more active role in selecting disposal sites. The officials plan to store highly radioactive waste from nuclear plants deep underground. They're drawing on a law that came into effect in the year 2000. They've been asking their local counterpart to suggest possible sites. But local officials have not offered up any locations. Experts have made some suggestions, and industry ministry officials say earlier this year they'll start acting on those proposals. Government officials plan to drop a list of sites that are deemed scientifically suitable. Then they'll ask local authorities to agree to the projects. It will take time for the government to regain public trust and support for the use of nuclear power. The government should listen closely to people's opinions and change the policy if necessary. Some experts are concerned that proceeding with the new policy in a haphazard way could cause doubts among the public and make the issue harder to resolve. Officials with Japan's Nuclear Regulation Authority say no nuclear plants are likely to resume operations in the near future. All commercial reactors in the country are currently offline. The officials set new safety standards last July following the 2011 accident at Fukushima Daiichi. The guideline call, uh, guidelines call on operators to prepare for severe accidents and to reinforce facilities to make them earthquake resistant. Seven utilities have applied for safety screenings for nine plants so they can restart operations. The regulators have held 65 meetings to examine those applications. They say none of the plants is ready to go back online because operators have not appropriately renewed their estimations of the scale of possible earthquakes. Utilities want to restart the reactors as soon as possible because the cost of importing fuel for thermal power generation is straining their bottom lines.
Survivors of the atomic bombing of Nagasaki and some of their neighbors have staged a sit-in. They used the annual New Year's Day protest to call for the elimination of nuclear arms. About 60 people took part in the gathering at Peace Park. Hitoshi Motoshima is the former mayor of Nagasaki. He said the people of Japan have a duty to help create a peaceful world as a country inflicted pain and damage on the people of Asia during World War II. The participants gathered in front of the peace statue. They offered a minute of silent prayer for the victims at 11.02 a.m., the time the bomb was dropped. We, the atomic bomb survivors, must spread our movement around the world to call for peace and the elimination of nuclear weapons. A high school student said she wants to help convey the survivors' messages to younger generations. She said she and her contemporaries will be the last people to hear the survivors' accounts firsthand. Visitors to Japan have kicked off 2014 on the slopes of one of the country's most recognizable landmarks. Guides at the Mount Fuji Visitor Center shared a little of their culture. The guides put on traditional clothing, then explained some of their customs. Their guests didn't pass up on the photo opportunity. I think it's, it is incredible that you can keep the culture around like that. Um, I don't know a lot about it, but um, I do know um, that it's really neat that you can just have people um, keep those traditions alive. About 100,000 people pass through the visitor center every year. Last year, officials at UNESCO designated Mount Fuji as a World Heritage Site. And now the guides are seeing more and more tourists from South America and the Middle East. They hope to welcome even more visitors to point them in the right direction up the mountain and to share more Japanese culture. Japanese shipbuilders are going the way of people who make cars and airplanes. They're making ships that are more fuel efficient. Now, the International Maritime Organization will require vessels to emit less carbon dioxide starting in 2015. The shipbuilders hope to profit from unexpected growth in demand for energy efficient vessels. Engineers with Mitsubishi Heavy Industries have made some innovations on tankers used to transport liquefied natural gas. They fitted its four tanks with a cover to reduce wind resistance. They say that improved fuel efficiency by 25 percent. And engineers with Mitsui Engineering and Shipbuilding are turning to the wind in their efforts to save fuel. They're developing metal sails so they can use wind power help propel large ships. It's very important for us to survive in the global market. By making advances in technology, we're putting a lot of effort, especially into researching CO2 reductions and energy savings. The Japanese are in for some competition. South Korean shipbuilders are making similar efforts.